I think by the time I turned 14, and I went from middle school to high school, right. um, it was a whole new school, whole new set of teachers, and I lied to the band director and told him I was a snare drummer and not a trumpet player. Right. So I, I showed up there, I'm like, um, I, I'm the drummer. And he's like, I thought you were a trumpet player. I'm like, no, nah, I play drums. And because I could read music, I faked my way through and, and learned how to do a buzz roll. And then that was amazing. There was a drum set there so, with a jazz band so I could play drums and learn beats. And I just became addicted. I bought a used drum set, set up in my garage, come home every day after school and practice for hours, like listening to, I don't know, Van Halen and Led Zeppelin records with headphones on and just playing. And, um, you know, it, it's, it was the first thing that my parents didn't have to force me to do every day. Right, like, right. like homework and piano lessons and eat your vegetables. This was like, I just <laughs> dropped my book bag and went straight there and did it over and over and over again. And then by the time I was about 15, I realized I think I have self-taught myself about um, as much as I can do. And right. then I got a drum teacher. His name is uh, Tommy Igo. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, and because uh, I grew up uh, right outside New York City. So he was my drum teacher. And he just took me like 10 levels further than I, I could have ever gone by myself. Right, uh, right. Like both technically and inspiring me. He was a very inspirational kind of drill sergeant kind of uh, teacher. Mm -hmm. Really got my little skateboarding punk <laughs> Uh, attitude out of the way and just said like you need to practice and okay but I mean you, you couldn't have really probably gone to a better person I mean because Tommy I mean all the experience and the knowledge and everything that he had because his father was a drummer too Sonny Igo yeah right I studied with him too oh wow because Tommy was busy touring a lot he would teach me like uh, for three weeks and then he'd have to go to do a jazz festival or something so I would go over his dad's house and study big band drumming with him and he was an amazing teacher too. Right. Real funny guy, real like uh, old school. It was great, great. And uh, so yeah, uh, it, I, I only think about this now because people ask me questions like, um, how did you get into, uh, how did you make that transition from you know student to professional? Right. And I think because I had a teacher that was constantly working and he would invite me to come out to his gigs in New York, I'd come and I'd watch him set up, sound check, play a set, take a set break, play another set, pack up, collect some money. You know, the whole thing, I'd watch him go on tour, I'd watch him come back from tour, you know. I got the whole experience of what it's like to work, not yeah. just to practice, and not just watching MTV and seeing what guys are like that right. are famous already. Sure. I was watching what it's like to do a day-to-day -day kind of job, and teach, and travel, and... So and be a professional musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's really interesting. I mean, in a way, you were probably very lucky that, you, that that opportunity arose. It's like, yeah, I, I'm only realizing now how important that was.